Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna and today I would like to answer a question from one of you guys. Show that the product of two odd integers is odd again. Okay, so this is about odd integers. These are numbers like 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on and also negative 1 or negative 3 and so on. And they say that if we form the product of two such odd integers, then the result is odd again. Let's see if this is true. So it is like 1 times 3 equals 3. Yeah, it's an odd number. Or 3 times 5 equals 15. Yeah, it's an odd number. And if we try it here as well, it's going to be an odd number again. So the statement seems to be true, but just taking some examples here is not a proof, of course. So we have to find a general proof that shows us that no matter which odd integers you take, the product is always going to be an odd integer again. So let's take an odd integer and let's call it a and another odd integer and let's call it b. These are our general odd integers we work with now. How can I write a and b so that I see that these are odd integers? What is the structure of an odd integer? Maybe we first start with an even number because it's easier to work with them first. So these are numbers like 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 and so on and also negative 2, negative 4 and so on. The even numbers. How do they look like? What is their structure? Well, these are always multiples of 2. Right? So I can write the 2 as 2 times 1, and the 4 as 2 times 2, and the 6 as 2 times 3, and the 8 as 2 times 4. So I always have this 2 times, 2 times, 2 times, 2 times. So an even integer can always be written as 2 times, and then I have times 1, or times 2, or times 3, or times 4. So I multiply this 2 by another integer. We don't know which one we pick, so I just call it c. c is an integer, so I say c is element of the set of integers. This is the form I can write every even integer. We were not interested in even integers, we wanted to have odd ones. So how do I get from an even integer now to an odd one? Well, let's compare it. From the 0 to get to the 1, I just have to add 1. From the 2 to the 3, I just have to add 1. From the 4 to the 5, I just have to add 1. Okay, so I get an odd integer if I start with an even integer and just add one. And this is the structure for our odd integers here. We start by an even form, so we start by 2 times, and now I take another variable, so I call it 2 times n, but then I have to add a 1 so that this number is going to be an odd number. And my n itself is going to be an integer. And my second number, the same, I start with an even number, so let's call it 2 times m this time, another variable, but then I have to add one so that this number is going to be odd, and my m itself is going to be an integer. So now I have my two odd numbers here I want to work with, and now I have to form the product of these two odd integers. So I take a and multiply it by b. And now I want to see that this result is going to be odd again. So let's insert a. We had this form here, so my a looks like 2n plus 1, and my b looks like 2m plus 1. And let's just multiply this on the next page and see if the result is going to be odd. So if we want to multiply, we can just multiply each element from the parentheses by each element of the second parentheses. So we get then 2n times 2m equals 4nm. 
then 2n times 1 equals 2n, then we get 1 times 2m, which is 2m, and then 1 times 1, which equals 1. This is the result. Is this an odd number? Well, we don't really know. We just know that an odd number has the form 2 times, let's say, x, so that we don't use these variables here, 2 times x plus 1. So I want to have this structure here as well. If we compare it, well, this plus 1 is in here, but this 2 times another integer, by the way, so x has to be an integer, um, I don't know if I have that here. But I can factor out a 2 because 2 is an element of each part here. So out of these three, I want to factor out a 2. So let's do this so that I get this structure here. What is left in my parentheses then? For nm, if I divide it by 2, I only have 2 nm left in here. Then I have the plus. If I factor out the 2, I only have my n in here. And if I factor out the 2 here, only m is left. And then I have my plus 1. Okay, looks better now. I have my plus 1. I have my 2 times here. But the question is, is this here an integer? Is this thing, if I call this now from now on x, can I say that this is an integer? Yes, I can say that. Because n was an integer and m was an integer. So if I add these two, it's going to be an integer again n was an integer, if I multiply it by another integer, it's going to be an integer again, even if I multiply it by 2. So if I add two integers, it's going to be an integer in total. So I have an integer here, I call this new integer I just formed x from now on. So it looks like 2 times x plus my 1 and my x is an integer. So I just showed that my result is an odd integer again and this is what I wanted to prove. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care!